Uh, hello, dear colleagues. Uh, thank you, everyone who has gathered here on the third day. In fact, my task is kind of challenging because my mission is to present the, introduce the Ministry of Culture uh, of Ukraine and the directions of the minister's uh, work. Uh, and they suggested uh, to give me 20 minutes for that. I thought that uh, since I can't tell everything anyway, something will remind, will remain. So I'm gonna start to structure my speech and follow the same uh, approach as was used uh, in other panels. As you've mentioned, uh, the topic of this uh, conference is the human resources, the creativity sector and people. And I actually really liked that all uh, moderators and speakers uh, emphasized the human dimension of the culture because this like warmth of the human body is what is the most um, valuable uh, today and what we should preserve in the first place. Uh, the first part of my speech uh, is a brief summary about the work of the ministry. This is the uh, cultural institution. Uh, there are uh, 186 persons of us. Uh, I'm in charge of the Directorate of Culture and Arts, and there are 16 people in my team. Uh, our responsibility is the uh, art, uh, uh, creative industry, and creative uh, or art education. So this uh, team uh, takes, um, takes care of all that. You know, there's also some direct uh, leadership of um, museums, of uh, different uh, institutions. Uh, other directorates, uh, including the Directorate of uh, Cultural Heritage, uh, which uh, had some, uh, faced some criticism because of not being able to save something. Um, I should emphasize that uh, and like unvisualize that, um, uh, virtualize that uh, that power, that government, because it's like that that institutions should be you know powerful, should ensure and protect, but in fact these are the same people uh, in danger, under stress. And uh, yesterday I heard a really important uh, message uh, by Anastasia Platonova who said about the memory and uh, uh, aging. And unfortunately, the Minister of Culture doesn't uh, preserve this institutional memory. And so thank you for this opportunity to talk about it now uh, because it's one of those issues that is also extrapolated further to everything that's happening. Uh, the second part of my presentation uh, is uh, this like zooming out uh, on the background of the zooming in which we used to have. Uh, here we have uh, huge numbers, but every time I speak, I uh, highlight that culture is just another kind of math. And here, one sometimes one equals 100 or 1,000. So one is never less than 100, and this is a totally different story. Uh, when saying that Ukraine has about uh, 34,000 of cultural institutions supported by the government. Uh, well, this number will be uh, publicized soon. Uh, this register of those institutions is almost ready now. It will be uh, available to public and we'll see mm, those numbers we work with. Uh, 5,000 uh, in independent sector, um, well, I've created this number in a way that uh, the Ukrainian Cultural Fund has like over 6,000 of some 
uh, unique applicants for four years, and um, uh, most of them are from the independent sector. So this number is um, uh, is invented uh, through the activities of the fund and exposed uh, through the fund because you know that the independent sector uh, has really a lot of challenges because of being in a shadow. I think that in fact the sector is uh, much bigger. You see other numbers uh, broken down by uh, specific uh, cultural institutions. But this slide is about what kept us for the past three years, because Ukrainian culture got into the the worst position. Uh, we just locked down, uh, took us right to the blackout. Uh, we've survived COVID, all the turbulences due to the impossibility to work, to operate to the full scale. And there were some uh, some threats to lives and to cultural sector because of COVID. Then there was this full scale war. And in fact, these uh, issues, challenges, they have just uh, got larger, but they, and they remained. But uh, thanks to the fact that uh, since 2018, we had this kind of a cultural increase. Uh, culture started behaving in a different way, and it uh, impresses the. Uh, uh, it's affected by the NGO sectors as well, uh, thanks to some institutions they uh, that uh, emerge in the uh, public sector. So these let us. Um, have these numbers now. That's the ongoing situation as of now. Uh, we have lost in the institutional uh, infrastructure domain, we have lost 3%. These are mostly clubs, libraries, whatever which is uh, in the east and south of Ukraine where the active military well, hostilities uh, take place. And I'd like to emphasize that the culture has its um, uh, unbelievable um, influence on what is going on at the war. You know that um, uh, some they 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 choose for locations some non-residential buildings, these uh, cultural infrastructure, and I explain it to myself that it's also kind of a contribution of culture which is uh, also required for the victory. And now, uh, how are we going to rebuild and what are we going to rebuild? 10% uh, or about 20,000 people are the people of art that left Ukraine or went to military. Uh, this is the approximate number and uh, it was caused by the um, uh, polls, questionnaires of uh, different of our fellow colleagues from different cultural institutions. And this is just an attempt to, uh, you know, to understand the scale of something, realizing that uh, we cannot hear everyone, which is also one of the biggest challenges uh, that I've already mentioned. We've realized that when saying that the winners write the history, we understand that uh, today we're introducing and presenting the story of survivors, of those who managed to secure themselves. Uh, at the regional and uh, local levels, the situation is more than threatening. Uh, and there's the level which is hard to be attained and we don't have any feedback from that. But uh, in October, five heads of uh, oblast uh, departments of culture have been fired, which means that regions uh, find it hard to survive. And there's the destabilizing of the system, uh, starting from the central uh, level we're losing those uh, those mechanisms, tools of uh, 
uh, de-escalating, cascading, and uh, so we realized that the government, the country, cannot be uh, close to each other. So when the system starts uh, damaging from destroying from the uh, middle link, uh, we understand how uh, threatening it is. Uh, because those people, they're also unique because, you know, they have the skills, the knowledge, they have the understanding of local context of what is happening in regions. So moving forward, uh, these are approximate numbers of uh, what we've made, uh, uh, we've forecasted. Uh, in one of the worst uh, catastrophic case scenarios. Uh, we're talking about the loss of about 50% and about uh, the numbers that the culture will not uh, receive uh, for the development. But uh, today we're still talking about the losses uh, caused by the Russian army and we have to calculate those uh, numbers, those losses as well. On 29 of uh, November, the Minister of Culture, Alexander Tkachenko, uh, was invited to the Council of the Culture Ministries of uh, Europe, and uh, the Ukrainian Ministry um, addressed its counterparts in European countries, calling for uh, g giving one person from the budge culture budget of their countries uh, to Ukraine. Of course, we do not uh, count on the 100% support, but it's just one of the tools uh, that we believe would let us uh, survive uh, 2023, which will be very, very challenging, uh, and all the war-related risks and the lack of resources, I think that all will affect the culture, cultural sector and institutions next year. And so uh, these are the needs uh, in, uh, expressed in billions of euro. Uh, that's for the restoration of the uh, heritage and uh, m destroyed infrastructure and the tools that the government will suggest to the donors. Uh, you know, we have this United 24 platform, which takes care of the army and medicine, but this platform also uh, enables donations to the culture, to some specific cultural institutions uh, which were uh, damaged uh, by war. Uh, just like that, uh, this, uh, this network will also have the uh, Ukrainian uh, fund um, uh, launched to it, and to most importantly, uh, as Ila spoke uh, about this wonderful initiative, I know four uh, initiatives like that in different sectors. Uh, they have uh, different levels of success, but still that started from just uh, people, individuals, and uh, who launched the funds uh, in support of different sectors. And this is what the government couldn't do. Uh, meaning that the public sector once again uh, has uh, become a safety net for the government because we're uh, flexible and we can do that uh, here and now. And you know that the speed of anything is what the government uh, always lacks because of different red tape procedures, of some approvals. So the government cannot be quick, but if the government, thanks to the public uh, sector's uh, coverage of 2022, we really have the, uh, hope that next year the government uh, will uh, uh, come with the active support, and this is about synergy and support. When it comes to the topic of our conference, I wrote down these um, topics that concern me as a person 
as um, as an art activist and ministry employee. Uh, we should talk about this. We should um, think about the solutions, how to solve them. The first issue is uh, resilience of individuals and institutions. We have been already talking about this. The director of a museum that can or cannot uh, leave, evacuate the co collection. What is more important, the institution or uh, its team? How do we measure? Uh, how do we look at the institution? Uh, after victory, we can come back to it, but right now um, we cannot forget, I believe, that individual choices and individual circumstances uh, are more important uh, over the civic uh, obligation, civic duty. Uh, arts education process, Alatfina talked about this, it's a huge uh, challenge, um, even even before, prior to the full-scale uh, Russian invasion. It's a very tough situation. I will not dive deep into the details, but we all understand that uh, arts educational process is we understand as as the transfer of, of knowledge from one person to another. Uh, such connections today are, are just devastated online. Partly we manage to compensate for it, but in uh, the visual performance and audio um, arts, online is not a sphere for education, to be honest. Uh, it's really difficult to cooperate in uh, to operate in this format. Although all universities do, do work uh, like this uh, in in the city of Kharkiv, uh, unfortunately, they man did not manage to um, to work uh, offline. We understand we they have been only working online. We know it's a um, it's a challenge. And so how the question is how to not to lose institutions and at the same time to preserve the quality of the education. Brain drain is another issue. Um, it is a huge problem um, and we can talk about it from many um, positions. We can discuss this as uh, a, a negative um, phenomenon for Ukraine because uh, the Western uh, labor market offers a higher uh, competitiveness level. Um, so in, in Ukraine, um, less uh, people with uh, fewer competen competences uh, remain and uh, specialists unfortunately flee the country. Uh, within the nine, uh, uh, nine months, uh, actually uh, Ukraine has, has seen a, a great um, number of intersectoral and international uh, uh, projects, which means that Ukraine actually is um, by activities. We do cooperate, uh, not only limited by um, our activity. Uh, you can take an example as the um, Venice Biennale, w which included Ukraine, which uh, proves the strength of Ukrainian culture and its potential. Uh, so the brain drain, well, you can talk about two very interesting aspects. Moving on to the occupied territories. Again, another uh, formidable uh, challenge. The question is how to come back. We understand that this should remain at the f as uh, the focal point of our attention and this program actually is devoted to this unfortunately russia which occupies any territory it leaves uh, scorched earth so what is happening on the deoccupied territories is on the one hand the uh, ruined infrastructure but on the other hand A depressing uh, world of U of Russian culture uh, because uh, Ukrainian culture uh, 
included um, many interesting um, uh, films. In a way, Ukraine should come back and show its amazing um, responsibility and care. It's a huge um, responsibility and a huge challenge uh, for the Ukrainian culture to, to, to support institutions on the deoccupied territories. Another issue is uh, even more complex is collaborators and emigrants. I understand it's no secret to anybody that we uh, that these topics are separate. It's not uh, it's not the same thing, obviously. But indeed, uh, intuitively, we understand how to understand, comprehend collaborators. But this topic needs to be discussed with some values in mind, how to understand uh, collaboration. Emigration sometimes is understood in negative, through negative lens. For example, people who, who left the country are understood uh, as people who run away. Uh, there is a problem of um, men fleeing the country. We understand that the Ministry of Culture uh, supports it and there are certain agreements, but the question is how the men should, uh, Ukrainian men should return from abroad. Maybe you don't, it's hard to realize that uh, actors of one Kyiv um, theater wrote a letter to uh, to the director who is uh, uh, who remains abroad uh, criticizing him you understand that there is um, quite a huge uh, hate towards people who uh, have fled the country uh, the last topic uh, which is very close uh, to me and and uh, really vital and which should remain at the fo as the focal point of our discussion is veterans. Veterans as artists and the audience. These are the people who will come back after the war with a different experience, who will want a different dialogue, who will want to talk about what they have seen, what they will have uh, experienced. Will we be able to create a safe area, safe space for the work as well as for the uh, audience so that the veterans could understand that they are needed? I can tell you that if uh, you have an idea for, um, uh, co uh, for cooperation, our Ministry uh, of Culture will be cooperating with the Ministry of Veterans and we'll be thinking how to develop this cooperation to integrate veterans. I understand this is new experience, but it will uh, shape our uh, vision for the future. I will uh, wrap up because I'm, I, I, I'm really short uh, of time. Lastly, a very short presentation with very short theses, uh, which I wanted to, um, to touch upon um, during our conference. I wanted to end up with a, um, with a picture um, as, a, as a testament to, uh, to our colleagues in, in, in Poland. In uh, s the year 1969, Tadeusz Kantor, uh, a panoramic uh, see happening. Tadeusz Kantor uh, in white uh, tie, he was uh, conducting the sea. This conducting of the sea uh, is indicative of um, the relations of. Um, 
of the ministry uh, managing culture. This scene is indeed ironic, but on the other hand, what I see in this metaphor is synchronization. Indeed, on the one hand, these are two separate independent uh, sectors, but when you synchronize them, as we can cooperate together, as we can uh, support one another and find some productive projects, such uh, conducting uh, of, uh, of a sea or culture, indeed, is the only, in my, in my mind, way to cooperate uh, between um, the ministry and culture. Thank you for your attention. Uh, should you have any questions, please ask me. Thank you very much.